So this example is an interesting one. We are going to look at a comparator circuit and we are going to make use of a thermistor. You see this RT here? Uh, we're going to use this thermistor to uh, detect or change the detect the changes in environment. All right, namely temperature. Recently, it's been really hot in Malaysia. All right, so this is an operational amplifier example from chapter 21. Okay, so this question it starts off by telling you that this is a comparator circuit, which is really great because it's a bit like a name drop. Lah. Another way for us to know that this is a comparator circuit is that there is no connection between the output and the input. So if there's no wire in this pink highlighted position, then this is a comparator. It's open loop. Lah. It's comparator. Okay. For your syllabus, at least. So that's another way to tell. Okay. So when we use the comparator circuit, we are comparing two things. What are we comparing? We are comparing our inverting input and our non-inverting input. So we are comparing V minus and we are comparing V plus. So where is V minus and what is V minus? Well, look at the connection. If you trace out the connection, V minus or the inverting input is connected between the thermistor and the 1.76 kilo ohm resistor. So this is an entire uh, potential divider circuit. This blue color is the entire potential divider circuit. All right, so V minus is at the middle or the inverting input. This is grounded. This is ground. So everything on the ground is zero. Okay, lah, might as well just label. U R zero, U R zero. Everyone is zero, and zero is my favorite number. Okay, and if you check the upper lead, the upper connecting lead here, is everything up here is three volt. Okay, so this is three volt. This is three volt. Okay. So right now, this is a potential divider circuit. You have 3 dropping all the way to 0. And this 3 volt is shared in ratio or in proportion to RT and 1.76. Okay, so we're going to park that one. Side. Where is non-inverting input V plus? Non-inverting input, if you draw the connection, you will see that V plus is connected to the second potential divider circuit. So there are two potential divider circuits. Wow. Well, this is okay. All right. Don't worry. Always try to separate out the branches. So the first branch is the V minus, which is connected to this blue color branch. And V plus, or the non-inverting input, is connected to the red color branch. I guess I could try to find some red to highlight for you. Let's see. This one? Okay. So... This is connected to this. All right. But the total potential across these two resistors is still 3 volt because it's connected to the same supply and the same ground. So this is another branch. All right. So everything that is on this side or the left side of the circuit. Sorry, my camera is a bit inverted. But everything here is what we call the sensing devices. This is used for sensing. Okay, and once they sense and create a, especially actually, the main sensing is obviously the thermistor la. So this one is for sensing. Okay, depending on the temperature of the thermistor, V minus will change. Then you might be thinking, then what's the point of V plus? Why do we have this V plus here? Why can't we just put a battery here directly? Well, maybe in different uh, situations we would like to change the reference voltage, okay? So before we go there, let us continue to read the question first because we kind of already know we probably need to do some calculation to find what V plus is and what is V minus, compare them to decide what the output is. All right, so let's continue. The variation with temperature theta of RT is shown in this big beautiful curve, all right? So you can see that the resistance will start at around 3.2 kilo ohm and it will decrease as temperature increases pretty standard negative temperature coefficient sketch all right so let's look at the question determine the temperature so we're gonna we have to decide the temperature at which the led so we're gonna find the temperature 
where the LED switches on and off. So this one is a little bit different than the first example because the first example just tells you, oh, this is a resistance, which LED turns on. Whereas now I need to decide when the LED turns on and turns off. Let us go and stare at the LED for a bit. All right, this is our LED. Okay, so when will the LED turn on? LED will only turn on if the current flow in this direction, the current flow like this, then the LED will turn on. Okay, so for the current to flow upwards this way, it needs to go from... Uh, high potential so this zero volt is high potential i'm just gonna label this a bit okay so this one is high potential high v okay to low potential low v so if this is low potential low potential must be negative because high potential is already zero so current will flow from a higher zero to a lower negative number so this must be negative the output V out must be negative. And I even know because of large gain, so I'm just going to write here, open loop, the gain is pretty large, infinite, especially for ideal OPM, okay, infinite or very large. So if the gain is very large, it really doesn't matter what v plus and v minus is as long as they are not the same the v out will be negative five so we will follow the supply so v out will be negative v supply meaning this will be negative five volt. so negative five is when the led turns on positive five is when the led turns off but is there any point where there is no output that will be the switching point okay so this switching point happens when v plus and v minus is the same okay so if you're a bit confused i'll write down for you number one if v out is equal to negative 5 volt led on number two if v out is positive 5 volt LED off. When does it switch from positive 5 to negative 5? Well, if you can't think of that, let me show you the simulation again. Okay, so here is the comparator again. And anyway, you can see that uh, the website here is linked. So you can always visit this to test it out. So let's look at the inverting input, which is negative V. And I can change this negative V to become a larger value. So let's say as long as it's greater than 4, you can see this one will flip to negative 15. Okay, why is this 15? It depends on the source. Okay, the source uh, voltage. Uh. We can adjust the source voltage. So just now, our supply was plus minus 5. So I guess I could put plus minus 5 here. Okay, and we mentioned just now the gain is very large. Uh. 100,000 in finite, 1 million. So this is good enough. Uh. Okay, so this is my gain. Plus minus 5. You check the circuit. This is plus minus 5. All right? So this means my, when I talk about this, the maximum output is plus minus 5. It's the supply. Right? So now as we are comparing V minus, which is the top one, to V plus. If V minus is bigger than V plus, like for example, 4.1 is bigger than 4, the output will be negative 5. Okay, so that's one of the possible outputs. You might be wondering, what if V minus is equal to V plus? Let's say, ding. ah, you get zero because they're equal, ma, nothing to compare. And what if V minus is smaller than V plus? So smaller than V plus, like for example, whoops, 3.9. Okay, if this is smaller than V plus 3.9, V plus is bigger, the output is positive. So you can actually tell that as I increase this, uh, this is the switch over point. When V minus is smaller, the output is positive. Smaller than V plus. If V minus is equal to V plus, like this, equal, then the output will be zero. If V minus is bigger, 
4.05 just bigger by a bit 4.05 okay you can see from the lower right hand corner if v minus is bigger the output is negative so we can go from negative to zero when the when this voltage is four four and four is the same to positive when it's 3.95 okay the numbers in the circuit is rounded to to one sf for some reason lah. okay so like that all right so hopefully that one is clear when this is zero this is when we switch over see so it goes from positive five to zero to negative five the switching over happens when v minus and v plus is the same okay so i guess i would uh write that down as well for us let me close this okay so let's see i can say that v out is equal to negative five and led is on so this is the kind of like preliminary analysis that some students or some of you might actually want to do before you answer the question but in this case I can say if V out is negative 5, this implies that V minus, which is the inverting input, is bigger than V plus. Okay? Whereas, in this case, if your V out is positive, V minus is less than V plus. Okay? And what else can we say? Well, of course, if you want to switch over, V minus equal to V plus, your V out is zero volt. This is when the switch over happened, as you can tell from the simulation. We go from positive to negative when the inputs are equal. Four volt, four volt. I mean, I don't know whether this one is four and four, later we can calculate. Okay, so here is where we will start off. All right, we will say that when the OM switches on and off, when the LED switches on off the switch over point is inverting input is equal to non-inverting input all right so i guess now we could actually try to calculate one of these let me go back to the equation okay let's let us try to find what the v plus or the non-inverting input is okay so here i'm going to write out the equation for v plus v plus is equal to Okay, now we're going to use some ratios, all right? V plus is actually measured from here to here. This is your V plus. We measure from the ground. So this will be 1.2 over 3, 3 1.5 plus 1.2 times 3, okay? So another way to write the ratio would be ratio of v plus and you take the resistance of v plus okay ratio of v plus means you take the resistance of v plus so 1.2 over total potential because this entire branch the total potential from here oops total potential from here all the way down here to the ground is 3 volt okay so 3 volt is 1.5 plus 1.2 potential is directly proportional to resistance what v equal to ir for the same branch okay so 1.2 is e equivalent ratio to v plus so 1.5 plus 1.2 is equivalent to 3 so i'm going to copy this over to the equation side all right so remember this v plus over 3 which is the ratio of the potential difference is equal to the ratio of the resistance 1.2 over the whole thing 1.2 times 1.5. I'll copy it over. Okay, so I've copied V plus over. It is 1.2 or 1.2 plus 1.5 times 3. There, 1.2 or 1.5 plus 1.2. Bring up lah, times 3. The kilo ohm will be cancelled out. So that's why I didn't include. Everybody here kilo ohm, ah, the units cancel out. Okay, what about V minus? Okay, V minus is an interesting one. Because if you look at V minus, we don't have RT. So we actually have to write V minus in terms of RT. Okay, but don't worry, V minus is still dot 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 dot. Here, here to ground is your V minus or your inverting input. V minus. Okay, so I'll write down here for us. V minus is equal to, let's look at ratio again. 
the equivalent resistance for V minus or inverting input is 1.76. Okay, we're going to divide by the total resistance, which is 3. And then this resistance for this whole branch is RT plus 1.76. Okay, RT plus 1.76. See the RT. So I think if I rearrange, I can get V minus. I will copy it over there. So V minus will be 1.76 over RT plus 1.76. Whole thing multiplied by 3. Okay, lah, I bring over now. 1.76 over RT plus 1.76 times 3. So now you can see why I actually didn't uh, press my calculator to find the non-inverting input V plus because the 3 and 3 can cancel out, uh, which I, I like cancelling stuff. Okay, cancel culture is not that good, but cancelling stuff in the equation legitimately, that's the best. All right, so now I guess we could simplify the equation a bit. And what I'll do is I'll just put this one as 1.76 over RT plus 1.76. This one, I will have to deal with this later. This, I'm going to press my calculator and come up with a ratio. Let me, let me get my calculator first. All right, I'm back with my calculator. Mm, 1.2 divided by 1.2 plus 1.5. Now, normally, you don't recommend... Okay, now this is not even a ratio. Is this, is this a ratio? 2 plus 1.5. Ah, 0 0.44. Oh, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. It's not a good Chinese number. But we can write 4 overnight. Now, normally I don't recommend using ratio, but in this case, this is not your final answer. You can leave it as ratio. Or you know what? Put 0 0.44444444. But make sure you, this is the in between. You haven't found your RT yet. So you have to make sure you take more SF. Okay? Take at least 3. Because this one already got 3. In fact, take 4. Lo. Okay? But you know what? Write fractions. La. Okay? So I'm going to cross multiply now. Right? So I'll have 1.76. Okay, let me continue here. Ding, 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 ding. So 1.76 times 9 is equal to 4RT plus 1.76 times 4. So I'll bring over there and subtract. That will be 1.76 times 5. Or I guess you could just do what you need to do. Ooh, I get 8.8. .8. Mm, my inner Chinese is happy now. This is equal to 4RT. You see, you never know. Sometimes the number not very good, but you wait a bit, then number is good. Sometimes life not very good, but you wait a bit. Good things will come if you put your heart to it. Okay, enough. Enough of positive talk. So 2.2 kilo ohm is your resistance of the thermistor. But they're asking you, what's the temperature? So basically, now you know that the thermistor is 2.2 kilo ohm. You're going to ask yourself, what is theta the graph the graph yes yes we go look at the graph ding 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 we haven't used the graph yet right okay so come come let's look at this beautiful graph that's like gordon ramsay sometimes beautiful it's a beautiful graph miss have you ever seen a not beautiful graph no all graphs are beautiful when correctly labeled and drawn all right so where is 2.2 this is 2.1 this is 2.2 Okay, so you do the thing where you extrapolate the line. All right, I've got ruler at home. That'll be great. This one is uh, pretty, looks like here. Lah. Okay, kind of. This one looks like 14. Eh? All right, eight boxes is 14. So 14 degrees Celsius. So I guess what you could do is you could say... from figure 10.2 theta is 14 degrees celsius when the thermistor is 2.2 kilo so this one you can put 14 degrees celsius so if you want you can put 14 point can you read two point no cannot your nearest temperature is i think one degree celsius let me see one box here is yeah no wait one two three zero point five okay you could put 14.0 but 14 is acceptable as well okay so that's why this one is four marks because it requires a lot of thinking step one 
you need to know when the LED turn on and turn off. So if you write this V minus is equal to V plus something like this, you get one mark there. Okay, so uh, idea that you understand that the input switches from positive to negative. This input or oh, it changes from ne whoops, changes from negative to positive. Okay, this input changes from negative to positive when V minus is equal to V plus. That one is one mark. Okay. Second mark is when you use the potential divider correctly. So either this ratio here or this ratio here, you get one mark. Potential divider application. You don't need to find V plus. As long as you apply the potential divider, potential divider method, you are okay. Okay, you may be tempted to go and find current, uh, but that is totally not advisable. All right, so moving on. You can find the thermistor resistance 2.2 kilo ohm. You will get one mark. Okay, and finally, read the graph correctly to 14 degrees Celsius. You will get one mark. So that's why this is four marks because you are in A2 now and there are so much more steps in life, isn't it? All right. So once again, don't panic when you see this kind of question. Whenever they say switch on or off, this is when the flipping happens. This is a comparator circuit. So the flipping will happen when there's nothing to compare. V minus is equal to V plus. All right. So part two, which is what you may be thinking. Okay, miss, I get it. It will change over when the temperature is 14 degrees Celsius. But will the LED emit light? at temperatures above or below 14 degrees Celsius. So this is part two. State and explain whether the thermistor is above or below the 14 degrees Celsius. Uh -huh, the 14 here. For the LED to emit light. Mm. So basically, the question now is, will the LED turn on when it's hotter than 14 degrees Celsius? Or will the LED turn on when it's lower than 14 degrees Celsius. Well, we need to go and look at the LED again, right? Okay, come, come, come. Let's stare at the circuit now. Hmm. Hmm. All right. So we have already concluded that LED will turn on. Okay, let me, let me highlight this for us. LED is on when the V out is negative 5 volt. And when is V out negative 5? when V minus is bigger. Okay, when V minus is bigger than V plus. But when is, what affects our V minus? Let me draw a box on here because this is very crucial. This is the, this is the make it or break it of the thermistor. Do I switch or do I not switch? Wow, my graphic card is struggling, guys. <laughs> okay. So, this V minus is this here. See, 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 see? Ah, what determines our V minus again? What was it that determines our V minus or our inverting input? What determines our V minus? This one. You look at the calculation that has been drawn once the graphic card sorts itself out. Okay, these are all your V minus hmm, all around the map. So this V minus is the one that will affect the reading. Okay, so this V minus is dependent on this ratio. But let me zoom in a bit so we can stare at it. This ratio. All right, 1.76 will not change, but RT can change. So if you want V minus to be bigger, this number to be bigger, should RT be bigger or smaller? If you're thinking number underneath here, RT should be smaller so that V minus is bigger, you are right. Okay, so I'm going to write that down first. I'm just going to find a place to squeeze it in. Please pray for the op amps in my computer. It is rapidly overheating. So if the sentences look a bit disjointed, you will know why. All right. So anyway, your non in no wait your inverting input over three just now the ratio huh, is one point seven six over 
RT plus 1.76. Okay, so we say that we want V minus to be bigger than V plus. Okay, so that means your RT should be smaller or less than what was the change over temperature again? You remember or not? Ah, 14 degrees Celsius. So RT must be smaller, smaller, smaller than 2.2 kilo ohm. Sorry, not degree Celsius. RT must be smaller than the switch over resistance. So the resistance changes over when it is 2.2 kilo ohm. This is the change over resistance. This change over resistance happens when we are at 14 degrees Celsius. So we want RT to be smaller. If RT is smaller, this means that your V minus will be bigger. Okay, so RT is smaller than 2.2 kilo ohm. You're going to stare at the graph a bit. 2.2 kilo ohm is here. If we want it to be smaller, then the temperature has to be hotter. So I'll draw here for you. So you see here to here, here to here. All this RT is smaller than 2.2. So all of this part here, our RT is less than 2.2 kilo ohm. So that means your theta is greater than 14 degrees Celsius. Just going to write here. Theta greater than 14 degrees Celsius. We have answered the question. The temperature will be higher than 14 degrees Celsius. But how do we write this down in three marks so that we get the marks right? Okay, so right now, we want to state and explain whether the, whether the thermistor is above or below. I guess we need to start about when the switch over, when does the LED admit light? Okay, that was where we started. What We started by saying that the LED admit light, LED is on when V minus is bigger than V plus. So I will say this, I will say that for LED to admit light, V minus is bigger. This thing must be negative 5. Okay, so I'll start from there. LED to admit light, V out is negative 5 volt, comma, then V minus, which is the inverting input, V minus is larger or greater than the non-inverting input. V plus. That is the first point. Okay. Second point. When does this happen? For V minus to be greater than V plus, RT is less than 2.2 kilo ohm. So I'm writing off the second line here. RT is small, less, smaller than 2.2 kilo ohm. So then you can make your conclusion. You can say that this one is so that V minus increase la. If you want to, you can add this point. Okay. So now you can bring in the temperature. You can say that from the graph or the figure 10.2, I believe. Is it figure 10.2? Nope, figure 10.3. <laughs> the temperature theta is greater or hotter than, I guess greater is good enough, la, 14 degrees Celsius. Okay, so these are your three marks. Number one, you state that for LED to admit light or for LED to turn on, for LED to admit light, the V out is negative. Okay, this one is one mark. LED to admit light, V out is negative. Second mark, inverting input is greater than non-inverting input, one mark, 
Okay. Third mark for this to happen, RT less than 2.2. And because of this, theta is greater than 14. This whole thing in its entirety is one mark. The conclusion. So you know how to decide whether LED admit light or not. V out must be negative. Okay. You know this happens when V minus is negative, is bigger. That's why your output is negative. You know how to make V minus bigger, which is to have the RT less than 2.2. See, look at the ratio. Look. Okay, look at the proportion. RT will take less proportion because we put RT up here. Okay, we put RT up here. Whoa, look at this blank space. We put RT up here. This RT will take a less proportion. Less of the potential difference. Leaving more for V minus. They share, share. Ma. If RT take less, then V minus will have more. No? So if V minus have more, when RT is less, RT is less when temperature is hotter. You can tell from the graph. Okay, so that's it for the question. All right. Uh, if you want, you can stop now. But I'm now going to add some bonus points for you in this question. All right. Or I may chop it up and put another video. Not sure. You will know when you're watching this. Lah. Okay. So I don't know if you notice, but V plus matters as well. Okay. When I say V plus matters as well, what I mean, this ratio here is out now. This ratio matters. Because we were basing our V minus, remember, based on V plus. So if I want, these are a few ways to ask the questions, okay? You may think about it. I'll record a second video to address it. Number one, what is the purpose of the 1.5 kilo ohm and 1.2 kilo ohm resistor in series? Why are they there? Number two, how to, let's say, increase the change over temperature of 14 degrees Celsius. Let's say I want to, the change over temperature to be 20 degrees Celsius. What do I need to change in the circuit? Okay. And number three, they could also ask you how to change or modify the circuit. Modify such that LED is on when theta is less than 14 degrees Celsius. So the LED turns on when the temperature is cold. In this current setting, 14 degrees Celsius, temperatures above 14, this LED will turn on. I don't know, maybe this is a switch in the aircon room. Maybe it's an experiment that you want to maintain at 14 degrees Celsius. And when it's not 14 degrees Celsius, you want people to know to come in and do something. So this LED is a is an output device. This LED turns on when the external temperature is hotter than 14 degrees Celsius. That is the entire circuit and the entire question. But now I'm asking for some modification. Number one, I want to know why is this one here? Number two, what can I change? What are the possible things that I can change in the potential divider circuit such that my change over temperature is not 14 degrees Celsius. It's a larger temperature. How to increase the change over temperature? Maybe to 20 degrees or 30 degrees Celsius. Because I, I, use, I do a different experiment. I want a different temperature. Okay. And number three, how do I modify such that my LED when, will turn on when it's cold, not hot, because now the LED turn on for temperature above 14. But now I want the LED to turn on for temperature below 14. What are the changes that I can do? So I guess I'm going to record this in the second video in further physics, further extension. All right. So to just to make sure you understand the circuit. But take some time to think about these questions, because if you really get a circuit right, you can change the resistor connection Depending on what you want, man, you can hack the circuit. This is basically what we're, what we're doing. We are looking at every single component or every single code, trying to understand its purpose in the circuit and trying to hack it based on what we want. Let's say you want to troll, you want to troll the person doing the experiment. You want to say, hey, bro, I want this to turn on when it's cold, not hot. 
just to troll people lah. April Fool's Day ma. So what are the changes that you can do? What are the changes that you can do so that this one turns on at a different temperature? What to change in the circuit? You are not given extra components ah. The num the number of components are the same. These are the same components. But what can you do to change them? All right. So I will leave that to you. There are actually quite a few answers to that question. All right. If you are interested and you haven't seen the video yet, you can comment down below. Think about it. What do you think are changes that we can do such that number one, I want the change over temperature to be higher than 14 degrees Celsius. Number two, I want the LED to turn on when it's cold. And to help guide you, I want you to think about why is this red color resistors here? That will actually help you answer the question. And of course, Modifying the blue color resistor can also help you achieve the goal as well. Okay, so what did we learn in the question? Op-M question can be very long. Yes, because I break down the circuit for you. But if you can understand the purpose of every single component here, including this resistor, uh, this resistor here is to protect the LED. Okay, so then we can analyze the circuit. Number two, the circuit switches on and off. So that works like a switch. Op-M switches on and switches the LED on and off depending on which input is bigger. And the switching happens when they are equal. Okay, number three, uh, we can also tell uh, whether the temperature turns on or off when it's hot or cold, depending on how we analyze the circuit. All right, so that's it for the example. Uh, it's quite a difficult one. That's why this part itself is already seven marks. Okay, so if you find this video helpful, Give the extension question a think. I will zoom in here for you. Give the extension question a, a, a good think. And like, share, subscribe. Okay, let's learn A2 and ace it together with your friend. I'll see you in the next one. Whichever one you watch. Bye-bye.